Now everybody here today has their own personal aura and you carry that with you all the way through your life. But unknown to you, it could be being affected and that means that sometimes you'll feel either happy or sad or sick or whatever. And that's because there's some bad stuff there that we don't want. So that's where our ancestral spirits are going to cleanse that bad stuff away. But to be able to get them to do that, it's important that I call upon them. I've got to make a bit of noise and ask them to join us. So if you'll um, give me a second, we'll get there. strong presence of those spirits with us. Now like I said, the spirit of the land is going to look after you in that physical sense as you're actually treating food on country. Now then, what the uh, ancestral spirits are doing, like I said, they'll be checking each and every one of you, looking for bad stuff. Stuff we don't want on country. So if they find any of that, they're going to grab hold of it and get rid of it from Nunawa country. Throw it off country. I guess the only downside to that is that um, it could be going on to one of our neighboring tribal group. Um, it's then up to them to take care of that business, get rid of the bad stuff. We could be throwing it you know, back and forth to one another, but as long as it doesn't take hold on country, that's the important part. The uh, spirits do ask that you to do two things while you're on country. The first one is to respect this place that you're in. Look after it, care for it while you're here. The second thing we need you to do is to also respect and be kind and courteous to other people that you meet while you're on country. And if you do those two things, the spirits will then harmonise with your stay on Nunawal country. So may the spirits be with you today, tomorrow and for always. I'll finish off uh, with a few words in language and they are Dala Nunna, Dala Nunawal, Yomalandi, this land is not all land. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wally. Key messages, respect for land, respect for the people. Thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to invite our Vice Chancellor to speak. Professor Brian Schmidt is the 12th Vice Chancellor of ANU. He is, like me, originally from the USA. Uh, Professor Schmidt studied astronomy and astrophysics at the University of Arizona and then in Harvard. Uh, Professor Schmidt won the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the startling discovery that the expansion rate of the universe is accelerating. But his other lesser known talent is his winemaking, although he may argue that that is his bigger talent. We'll see. Please join me in welcoming Professor Brian Schmidt, Vice Chancellor, to speak. Thank you, uh, Jamil, for your warm welcome. And welcome, everyone, to ANU in the beginning of our academic year and to commencement. Uh, Wally, thank you so much for uh, your willingness to come out. And welcome, everyone, our students, 
to this land, your welcome, as Wally likes to tell us, will last for your entire time on country. So it's meant there to protect you for your entire time that you are here at ANU. And I do hope that you will show the respect that Wally has asked you to the land here that we're meeting on uh, in the land around uh, this country. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge and pay my respects to you, your ancestors, to the Nunawal people, uh, to our emerging leaders here on campus, and any indigenous students that we are welcoming for the first time today. Uh, it is great to see so many faces out here. I can see them extending out into the distance, and I hope those way in the back next year, I think, to get to be up front is part of the deal. But welcome to our uh, ANU community, which is a great thing to be part of. As Jamil said, as Vice Chancellor, I get the honor of making sure that ANU is the great university where we help students like you get a great education so that you are able to get the most out of your life now and into the future. This will be one of the most important times of your life. Your education here is something that will set you up for the rest of your life. And my promise to you is to make sure that you get one of the world's great educations, one of the great degrees. It will allow you to change the world however you see fit. That's your job. We're going to prepare you to do that however you think you want to. So let's just warm up a little bit and ask a few questions to get us all oriented. First of all, I want people to raise their hand if you have never been to Canberra before studying at ANU. Raise your hand if you're new to Canberra. Lots of people new to Canberra. Uh, who has never been to Australia before until starting at ANU? Raise your hand. Lots of international students. This is one of the most international universities in the world, certainly the most international in Australia. And finally, Raise your hand if you're sitting next to someone who you didn't know before coming to ANU. That's pretty much most of you. So if you're sitting next to someone who's never been to Canberra before, new to Australia, or you don't know, do the Australian thing and say, g'day. Yes, please do it. Make sure. Let's hear it. Excellent. It is a daunting experience traveling away from home and embarking on a university degree. It's a completely new environment, but if you take a moment and think you're not alone, you've just seen that almost everyone is in your shoes. So your job over the next week, over the months and years that you're here, is to meet people from all sorts of background, all sorts of places, studying all sorts of things. Some of the most interesting and talented people you will ever meet in your life are sitting around you right now. And remember, you might well be one of those people to the people around you. Now, when I first started university back in 1985, a long time ago now, I knew almost no one when I arrived at the University of Arizona. I had grown up in Montana and Alaska, the rural mountains of, of North America. And Tucson was a very foreign place. The first thing is the weather was about 44 degrees Celsius when I arrived. And when you grow up in Alaska, 44 degrees Fahrenheit was sort of a normal summer day. So it was different. I knew two of the 30,000 students who I was attending school with. And uh, it took me a while to adjust. Mobile phones did not exist. Of course, social media and the internet didn't uh, exist either. So being able to connect with family and friends was hard. I got one phone call a week for about three minutes. That's what I could afford. But in those first few weeks, I did find my feet. And uh, the university was intimidating. There were all these people who knew stuff I didn't know. I felt like I was in over my head. Now, in the fullness of time, I did pretty well. But I'm telling you, the first week, I thought, I'm just not going to make it here. I'm not smart enough. I don't know things. Back yourself. Everyone feels this way. And if you don't, you're lucky, I think, or maybe just a little unusual. But most of you are going to feel a little uncertain. That is the way life is. 
But I did start meeting interesting people. I did realize that maybe I didn't know quite as much as everyone else growing up in the sticks like I did, but I learned and I caught up. It took some time. And some of those people I met in those first few weeks are friends still to today. Uh, and again, if you put the effort in meeting people, you will make friends too. Of course, there is one thing you all have in common. You have chosen to come from wherever it is to the Australian National University. And this is a decision I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure is the best decision of your life. Now, ANU really is one of the world's great universities. I get to see our alumni all around the world. We have several on our stage here. Um, and I'm telling you, you really do get set up. And you get a chance of getting an education equal to any place in the world. And this is because our staff and our students come together. Our staff have done research that are responsible for a huge number of things. The eradication of smallpox, bringing democracy to parts of the Pacific, creating APEC, developing public policy that allows most of our domestic students to attend university in a way that's affordable. We've helped devise the Medicare program here in Australia and the child care rebate more recently. And just last year, we found, for example, the oldest, planet, our oldest animals on the planet to accompany the oldest life on the planet our researchers discovered a few years back. I'm not the only Nobel Prize winner of this university. We've had four Nobel Prize winners do their work here. We've had, for example, um, Eccles went and understood how synapses in our brain work. Uh, we had uh, the beginning of game theory and economics started here. We had Peter Doherty and Ralph Zuckernagel go through and show how T cells can make us immune from viruses, a fundamental way to combat disease. And of course, my own work about the fact that the universe is accelerating are just the tip of the iceberg of many of the things that are done here. It is that confluence of great researchers and great students that can make a great experience. And that's what we're going to focus on. So uh, many of you will be uh, living in our residential halls. We have more student accommodation here on campus than any other university in Australia. And that's despite being one of the smaller universities in Australia. Living on campus gives you a chance to really interact with people. But those of you who are staying off campus, We've made it so much easier this year for you to spend time here, thanks to our new Cambry precinct behind us. And please also become members of Griffin Hall, which is dedicated to our off-campus students. Being part of this community, that is one of the great parts of a great education. Whether you are here studying the classics or law, or want to become an economist or a scientist, you will have the opportunity to meet people studying this amazing array of subjects. And through your new friends learning what they learn, you will become broader and you will be prepared and able to deal with whatever life throws you coming forward because you have, will have seen so much from so many different perspectives in your time here. As I said, you're the first cohort of students that are going to get to enjoy our brand new Cambry precinct. We have the gym, a pool, a cinema, supermarket, theaters, health and well-being center facilities, uh, health and well-being facilities, a bar, a bookshop, and the list goes on. And these various places are going to be rolling out over the coming days, weeks, and months. If you haven't had a chance, please go around and have a look. You're going to be spending a lot of time here, probably in the new Teaching and Learning Center, uh, but it really is there to help make your time here on campus really enjoyable. And this campus, we're very lucky. We're in the heart of the nation's capital, 145 hectares, and we have all sorts of interesting places to explore. You might find all sorts, seven or eight different species of parrots. We have echidnas, kangaroos, possums, ducks, of course, and I've even heard rumors of a platypus or two, although I have yet to see one of those. So finally, it's my role to provide you with some gratuitous advice, uh, hopefully sage as well, that I've learned in my own journey. 
uh, for you to think about, well, you are taking yours here. Look, in especially your later times here, at work experience and internships. These are a chance to go out and see how the world works and how what you've learned here intersects with that. You get amazing opportunities here, unlike any other place in Australia and some of the most unique opportunities around the world. This can be just in Parliament House or it can be on the other side of the planet. But they don't just come to you. You need to go out and ask. So don't just stand around. Take your life in your hands. Get out and make a pest of yourself. You have a chance to go use the ANU's Career Hub to help you, but again, it's in your hands. Make sure you take the time to learn about the history of our campus. Uh, the First Nations people, we have historical items around uh, the campus. We have a new uh, map uh, and heritage trail for you to learn. Be prepared to go in and learn uh, from, for example, our online modules or take some of the classes that are available here. If you have a chance, stop by the Chabal Center. Auntie Anne's there always baking things. She's always happy to say hello, and she's very good at feeding you if you do. Look after yourself. Look after your physical health and look after your mental health. Studying, it's very easy for things to become hard for you. And being prepared to understand that you need to look after yourself is really important. So socializing is important, having some fun, some downtime. Make sure that if you are feeling a bit under the pump that you use some of the many services we have on uh, our campus. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of being smart. And everyone, again, has issues from day to day, including me, and I use them as well. So follow my lead, use them when you need them. Be a positive part of the community. This is a great place to work and study, but it's a great place to work and study because of you, and you need to be part of that community. We need everyone to be out and doing things that they find interesting. Uh, treat people the way you want to be treated, that is show great respect. Call out bad behavior if you ever see it. We don't see too much of it here, but if you do see it, don't just sit and watch it. Say, hey, that's not right. Be prepared to stand up, and the people around you will support you, including myself. And finally, join a club or society. Do things that are fun and interesting to you. More than 200 clubs and societies on campus, from everything from chocolate appreciation, I like that one, rock climbing, not so good at that, e-games, a little young for me, I'm afraid, these days. Go out and try it. There's 197 other things in between. Or if you want, you can start your own society if we're not yet represented. It is in your power to determine your destiny. And finally, one final thing is you're at a great university. We record your lectures for your benefit when you can't attend. But for heaven's sakes, you've got the most amazing professors in the world here talking to you. You can have a conversation with them. You've got amazing students. Go to your classes. Be part of it. And if for some weird reason you don't think your class is worth attending, then you should complain. Okay? vc.anu.edu.au. You can email me. If your class is that bad, you shouldn't attend. I expect them to be wonderful. And we have these amazing new classrooms which are going to change the way we teach in what we hope are really active and exciting ways. So just remember, coming to university is it's a chance for you not to be a passenger. Take your life in your hands. It'll expand your horizons. Try new things. Make friends. Work hard, but play hard. Have a good time. Welcome one and all, and I'll see you around campus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian, just echoing on what he said. And also, as someone who was not from Canberra and not from Australia, this is a very beautiful city. Right behind us, we have the Botanic Gardens. You can go up Black Mountain. You have Questacon and National Museum and National Library and so many cultural jewels here that I encourage all of you to get out. And like Brian said, part of that play hard is to play hard in a cultural standpoint and immerse yourself in all things Australian and all things Canberra. Because I'm sure as people from all over Australia will tell you, Canberra's a little bit different. But we like that. We like that about Canberra. Um, 
It's now my pleasure to welcome our next speaker to the stage, and one of our very own esteemed alumni, Professor Megan Davis. Professor Davis is a Cobble Cobble woman from Southwest Queensland. She is one of Australia's most highly regarded lawyers, specializing in public law and public international law. She was the first indigenous Australian to sit on a United Nations body and was recently appointed to the Australian Rugby League Commission. Professor Davis was the university's 2018 Indigenous Alumna of the Year. Please join me in welcoming Professor Megan Davis. Um, thank you for that very generous introduction. Um, and thank you to Wally for that beautiful welcome to country. And of course, um, to Brian. Um, I feel very honored to deliver the ANU 2019 commencement address. Um, I also know that the 35 degree heat, I think, is starting to kick in. I can see people starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. So um, um, I'll stick to my time limit of approximately eight minutes, in which I'm going to say a little bit about myself, um, my time at ANU, and then just finish by, um, I suppose, um, imparting on you the ways in which my world-class ANU education has informed my professional life. Um, I am an Aboriginal woman, a Cobble Cobble Aboriginal woman from the Barangam Nation in southwest Queensland. Um, I grew up in and around southwest Queensland and southeast Queensland um, and did most of my schooling at a town or, or a little, um, well, a town I would say, Eagleby in Logan City in southeast Queensland. So I did my two undergrad degrees, Bachelor of Arts in Australian History and my law degree at the University of Queensland. Um, after that, I got a fellowship to the United Nations, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, where I spent a year learning about the UN system um, uh, with respect to Indigenous peoples' human rights. Um, and while I was there, I noted that many of my peers, um, my, uh, people of my same age um, on this UN fellowship um, already had master's degrees and doing PhDs. Um, and the foreign affairs community there in Geneva, the Australian foreign affairs community as well as internationally um, and at the UN, and at the UN um, said that ANU was the only place to go to study international relations and international law when I returned to Australia, um, which is what I did. Uh, my time at ANU, uh, I did a graduate diploma in legal practice um, in the College of Law. Yay, Law. Looking all hot over there, but cool in your purple hats. Um, I did my master's in international law at ANU College of Law as well. Um, and I was supervised by Professor Hilary Charlesworth in my PhD. Um, and so I was based at Regnet, which is the College of um, Asia and the Pacific, looking resplendent in orange. Um, and also the College of Law. Um, so I feel very at home here on this campus. It's a very familiar place to me. And this education, this world-class ANU education has taken me all over the world. Um, it really does set you up uh, for life. So just some memories of my time at ANU. Really, the key thing that I raise with everybody about my time at ANU is, is the campus. It's a beautiful campus. I've spent a lot of time at many campuses across Australia, um, especially UQ and the University of New South Wales. I think what's um, beautiful about it is that it is so Australian. It is such an Australian landscape. It, um, and the university very much fits with um, the natural environment. The landscape is very much uh, evocative of uh, great Australian landscape poetry, like Les Murray. Um, and, and that is one of the things that I really remember about my time here. The other thing about the ANU campus, uh, of course, is that it's in Canberra. Um, and there's many, many things to do in and around Canberra. Um, the thing I spent a lot of time at was just sitting around the tent embassy near Old Parliament House. I spent a lot of time at the National Gallery of Australia, just wandering around. There's a fabulous Indigenous um, art gallery there. And the most important thing is the NRL Canberra Raiders. You must join and you must go and watch. So, but really I think the key thing I remember are my teachers here, my lecturers. Um, they really are world-class academics and scholars. 
Um, I learned so much in my GDLP, my LLM, and in my PhD from academics right across um, the disciplines, actually. Um, and the students. There are so many incredible students who attend ANU and attended when I um, was here at ANU. And I think it was really instrumental in transforming um, my, my thinking, my thinking about the world. It really is a very rich student life here at ANU. And in my work with the United Nations internationally, I have um, come across mostly ANU um, graduates in the work that I have done. So finally, um, so that you're not all going to melt, but there's a bit of wind coming through. How did ANU inform my professional life? I've um, spent a long time now, 20 years, working in and around the United Nations. I've just completed six years on the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, which is based in New York. I'm just finishing three years with the Human Rights Council in Geneva on an expert mechanism on the rights of Indigenous peoples and about to be reappointed for another two years. Um, and I've done many other really fascinating things, such as sit on the Land and Environment Court in New Zealand. I'm leading a child, a review into Aboriginal child removals in New South Wales. Um, an NRL review into um, player behaviour and player culture. And much of what I've learned here at ANU has um, come with me in that work. I've learned about structures and systems and not accepting the status quo and working out how to change the status quo. My work uh, through the United Nations has taken me all over the world, uh, the Republic of Congo, where we looked at better implementation of human rights there, to Finland to resolve a dispute between the indigenous people, the Sami and the Finnish government, to Congo and Kenya in terms of reform of uh, land laws, to Japan in terms of the recognition of indigenous people's rights, to the Russian Federation. It's been a very rich, rich career I've had to date um, because of the study um, and the thinking and the way my thinking developed by being a student here at ANU. So finally, I wanted to just impart, I suppose, four things I think that really informed um, the things that I've done, but primarily the very important work that many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have been involved in over the past eight years, and that is the work towards recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the Australian constitution. And many of you would know that, if elected, um, the ALP has committed to running a referendum in the first term to enshrine a voice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the Australian constitution. I was one of the constitutional lawyers that led that very important work, including design of the constitutional dialogues um, and deliberative dialogues that we had with Aboriginal communities across Australia including being out there in communities and running these conversations about how to make Australia a better place for Indigenous peoples. And since the Uluru Statement from the Heart was issued um, at Uluru um, on May uh, the 26th, 2017, we've been doing a lot of work to progress that in terms of law reform. And most of the skills that I've developed in terms of being able to push that forward um, really um, were honed here at uh, ANU. So those four things I just wanted to impart um, to you um, at this wonderful ceremony, and you all look fabulous, by the way. The first thing is to be a flexible thinker, not a rigid thinker. It's, it's, it's hard for me to say this, but I'm not always right. Um, and some of the greatest people I've worked with here at the UN um, across Australia have always been flexible thinkers. They're prepared to shift. They're prepared to listen to other people's perspectives and arguments. Be a flexible thinker. Listen to what other people are saying. The second thing I'd say is don't be fenced in by convention, by what people say, you know, how things should be or what I would call the status quo. Don't be fenced in by convention. Um, that was, I think, the key to Uluru, is that every step of the way since 2011, people have said that we couldn't have structural reform, 
that we couldn't have proper reform, um, that we just had to have symbolic reform, that we will never have a referendum. And I reflect on one philosopher once saying that sometimes in thinking about the world, truth isn't what you need. That idealisation is useful truth. And I think that's very much um, been a part of the work that we've done in terms of Indigenous recognition. Um, but also I learnt that from my teachers here at ANU. The third thing is to be curious and read widely. And I very much learnt that from my professor, Hilary Charlesworth at Regnet and um, the College of Law. Um, I have subscriptions to everything, um, science magazines, nature, um, the New Yorker, the New York Review of Books and rugby league magazines. I read everything. It's really important to be curious. One of the things I love about Twitter is that you can set up lists um, in different disciplines, um, in different countries and different issues and, and just keep on top of all the many wonderful things and wonderful ways of thinking that are going on around the world. The final thing I would say is just, and I very much learnt this at the College of Law, and that is to do with imagination. If you want to change the world, you have to imagine the world can be a better place. You have to imagine that the world can change. Um, my work in law reform and, and all of the thinking that went into the designs was very much done here, um, both at Regnet and the College of Law. And that message that Hilary Charlesworth imparted to me, that is to say, you know, you can't get down and depressed that the world won't change. Um, if you believe it will, and you can imagine a better way of doing things, that's, that's how you get there. And that is the work of law reform. And so they're the four really key messages that I was reflecting on in terms of my own thinking um, and what I learnt being a student here at ANU. I don't think I would have the career I have had, both in terms of a, as a UN expert, but also as a constitutional lawyer without my education here. So just to um, finish up, I just want to congratulate you all on your very hard work getting into ANU. And, and that was a lot of hard work. And if you are here, you're, you are already a student who has the skills and the aspirations to be world class. Regardless, ANU and this wonderful campus and your fellow students and the marvellous academics and scholars and teachers here will deliver you that world-class education like it did me. And I'm just a kid from Logan City, a housing commission estate in South East Queensland, whose family never went to university, who never would have thought that she could have attended ANU, um, let alone now be an expert at the UN and leading a constitutional reform process. Um, so I would like to just end by um, saying good luck um, and I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Professor Davis. Uh, and please take note of the example of what anyone in this audience can become with the work and energy that you put into it and with the backing of ANU, but also the idea of giving back, um, either as a staff member or as an alum. Uh, and that giving back can start from right now in terms of what you do, as Wally talked about, with respecting the land and respecting the people, but also know that this is just the beginning of your lifelong journey and relationship with ANU, and we hope that you see it as that as well. Um, at this point in time, I'm looking to welcome our final two speakers, uh, who are your student body presidents, who head up both the undergraduate and postgraduate associations. Um, Eden Lim is the president of ANU Students Association for Undergraduates. Eden is currently completing her Bachelor of Laws with honors and a Bachelor of International Relations at ANU. Eden was the secretary of the Bergman College Residence Committee and is hoping to work in the legal profession when she graduates. Zil Horenga Walkop is the president of the Postgraduate and Research Students Association. Zil is currently studying a Master's of Laws and he already holds a graduate certificate of law. Outside of ANU, Zil is a lifelong member of the World Scouting Movement and is, a passionate, and is passionate about music and the performing arts. Please welcome your student presidents, Eden and Zill. Hello, everyone. 
everyone. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples on whose land we meet today. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past and emerging. I'd also like to welcome and pay my respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people here with us today. Firstly, I'd just like to say a huge welcome and a huge congratulations to you all for coming here to the ANU. What a time it is to be alive. My name's Eden. I'm the 2019 ANUSA president. I'm a fifth year law and international relations student from Perth, WA. It's a privilege to stand here and to welcome you on behalf of the peak undergraduate representative body. I'm excited and I'm really thrilled to be here. There's something that's really special and really unique about the ANU and about living here in the bush capital. Students from far and wide, from different states, from different countries and from different cultures all come here and are mixed together to embark on a unique world-class learning experience. And look, what I've found in my time is that so many students get involved in so many different aspects of campus life, clubs, ANUSA, residential halls. And it's really hard to walk through campus or civic in your first or second or third year and not see someone you know. This is why I love the ANU and it's really a testament to the strength of the student community here. Whether you're into sport, music, protests or rallies, there's something here for you. Our time here at the ANU is a wonderful opportunity to learn both inside and outside the classroom and I implore you to get around ANUSA's 150 clubs and societies, our departments and our Imaginarium O-Week program. Get involved this week and stay involved throughout the year. Your time at the ANU will be a wild ride, I'm sure. There'll be wins, there'll be losses, there'll be ups, and yeah, look, there'll probably be some downs, but ANUSA is here to help you get through these times. And we have a range of activities and we have a range of services, including our free meals program, emergency grants, and our free legal service. If you need anything at all, just ask ANUSA and we'll do our best to help you. Look, folks, I mean, there's no doubt that we're living in a time of change and we're living in a time of challenges and our interactions are increasingly online, the cost of living for students is on the rise and our interconnectedness is placing unprecedented demands on our lives. And I mean, look, houses are being valued by avocados, but looking out and seeing all your eager and ready to go faces, I'm filled with so much hope. Hope for the creation of a campus and hope for the creation of a world filled with innovation, passion, and respect. To finish, I thought I'd reflect on some things that I've learned over my five years here at the ANU um, and sort of impart that, that wisdom hopefully onto you all here today. Determine your own goals and standards. Look out for your mates, go with your gut, and remember that it is us, the students, who can build and create this campus, our community, and our ANU. Have a great year and get keen for 2019. Thank you. All right, lucky last. So um, being the last speaker, I get to retread a lot of old ground and I'll try to be relatively brief as has been pressed, impressed upon me by a few people. Um, my name is Zil Havanga Warkop. I'm the president of the Postgraduate and Research Students Association, the peak representative body for all postgraduate and research students at the ANU. Uh, others have spoken of the opportunities afforded by a world-class education at ANU, but I would like to speak and encourage you all briefly of the importance of community, active student engagement and your well-being. In fairness, they've also noted all of that, so as I said, I'll be re retreading a little bit of old ground. Uh, before I begin, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects um, that we meet here today on the traditional lands of the Ngunnawal people and to pay my respects to their elders past and present. The Ngunnawal ha people have a long and continuing connection to this land and I encourage everyone to learn more about their rich social history. So thank you very much, Wally, for encouraging us to do that. Community. Studying at the ANU is unique in many ways, but I feel that one of the most understated of those, albeit it has been mentioned quite a few times today, is the uniquely vibrant community here. 
being a university with such a diverse student cohort, with so many people from around Australia and around the world, we create here a rich cultural tapestry that is open, inviting and inquisitive. Being in a comparatively small but nonetheless great city such as Canberra means that when we look around for friendship and shared experiences, we find it in the people living around us on campus at many of our great halls of residence or in the astonishing variety of clubs, societies and student groups here. Cherish this opportunity and make the most of it, as many of our previous speakers have noted. Student engagement, unsurprisingly, a student representative is going to encourage you to get involved in student activities. In making the most of the ANU community, I encourage you to become involved, not just in a passive sense. Student engagement is one of the strongest foundations of this university's culture. By that I mean the way in which students, whether first, third, fifth, or perhaps ninth year, become involved in creating this community. Whether it's volunteering during our week, and thank you so much to all of the volunteers who are volunteering during our week. Thank you for the claps, that's very good. Um, joining in and supporting the many, many clubs and societies here, not just at, uh, at USA, but also through ANU Sport. Um, being on resident committees or ANU committees, interhall sport or art, or becoming involved, indeed, with ANUSA or PASA. Without you people, so many of the great things about this community would not exist. And this level of involvement is, I think, uniquely ANU. I'd like to finish with a note on well-being. It has been touched on, and I thank Brian for speaking so eloquently about it. I would like to end my brief time by emphasising that in spite of all of the wonder and merriment available to you here, it is nonetheless the case that sometimes studying is hard. Further, you may, or you will, likely be here for some time, and you may over time experience the trials of life. You may feel that you don't belong, or you may develop a deep and abiding sadness for whatever reason. That's okay. This can happen to anyone, indeed. It has happened to me. You will get through it. I encourage you all, if you ever encounter these trials or develop this sadness, to remember your friends and family know that they care and know that they want to help you. If you need someone to talk to who is a bit removed from your life, I can personally recommend the wonderful people at the ANU Counselling Service. So as I stand here and see all of you, and particularly having heard from all of the wonderful speakers and their experiences, uh, I wish you to enjoy the, the experience of studying at the ANU, and I'm very confident that the future is in safe hands. I wish you all the best in 2019 for your studies, your growth, and for a vibrant student experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eden and Zill. Um, and please follow their, their wise words uh, based on experience and their time at ANU. Uh, follow their lead, and you will end up having a much better time than if you don't, I promise. And just echoing what they said in terms of what Zill just said about your mental health and mental well-being, we want you to ask for help. Um, if anyone here right now believes that they don't belong here, that's OK. We understand that that's reality for some people. But if you're sitting here, you belong here and know that we, we all, from student uh, organizations, from the staff and faculty, we wanna do everything in our powers to make sure that you have the best, safest, happiest, healthiest experience possible. You need to work with us on that, but we're here for you. So whether it's through the Counseling Center or through your staff and faculty and tutors, please make sure you're asking for the help. Please go to your O-Week orientation events. We don't expect you to go to all of them, but the work you put in now and this week will set you up for success for the next three, four, five, nine years to come, as the case may be. Um, and also, following up with um, Eden said, look out for your mates. Uh, and part of looking out for your mates is looking out for yourself in the process as well to make sure that everyone is safe and sound. This is the end of our formal proceedings. Um, 
you would have collected raffle tickets at your academic colleges. You'll need those for the barbecue at Cambry. If you uh, neglected to collect those, please pop back to your uh, academic colleges, follow those banners, and just make sure you get a, a raffle ticket before you go. Um, there will be free lunch provided with that said raffle ticket. Uh, also, please don't forget to take the booklets that were at your seats with you. There are lots of great contact numbers, be it ANU Counseling, Careers, Academic Skills and Learning Center, and so much more. But before we go, please join me one last time in thanking today's speakers. So, it's 2019. The day is yours, the year is yours, your time at ANU is yours. It starts now. Go have fun in Cambry.